Does that mean we're going? All right, now. Okay. All right, Mai. <laughs> okay, here we are. Um, trip complete. This is a post bike expedition breakdown of what I used on the uh, north to south fat bike expedition. Um, the last trip I did, I did a, a review of my bike prior to the experience, but I realized that um, a lot of stuff gets lost in translation in terms of what you actually used and what, what came really handy. So I figure I'll do it right afterwards. Uh, in fact, less than 24 hours afterwards. So first things first, um, let's start from the, the clothing, the base layers. Uh, right down in front of me, those are my 45 North boots with liners. I used a whole bunch of seam sealer on these things and they came in incredible handy. Inside those boots I had sock liner as well as a Descent Labs sock, ski sock over that, kind of calf length. Um, we would use some turkey bags over those for vapor lock in case it got really sweaty or river crossings happened. Um, in terms of all my body, this is a real Rafa base layer that we'd use to keep the sweat off. This is like a 66 North gridded kind of fleece shirt that I'd wear nearly every day. A um, little zipper to kind of help cool you down. Um, some Duckworth, basically three quarter length Merino leggings. And then my outer shell, which is pretty much what I'd wear every single day. It was my favorite layer. This is this Gore-Tex Infinium jacket. Uh, super stretchy from 66 North. That would come in handy all the time. This puffy I'm wearing uh, is basically a, I don't know, down jacket with some stretchy sides. Worked really well. Um, wore it pretty much every time I got cold. I brought another puffy I'll pull out, but that was kind of really all I needed for 99% of the time. Um, this is a pair of Black Diamond ski touring pants, like a soft shell shoulder fabric. These were nice because they had vents on the legs, plus they had little kind of gatekeepers around the boots, suspenders, so they would stay on. Definitely the heaviest pant I've ever biked in my entire life, um, but they came in incredible handy. Um, I thought I would be a genius and not ride in a chamois, but after about the first 24 hours, I realized that was a really dumb idea, so I bought this in the only town we passed. This is like a pair of fox chamois I ripped out of, uh, <laughs> I ripped out of a pair of bike shorts that I bought. Those came in handy. Um, Gloves. I brought five pairs of gloves and I also brought five hats because fashion, why else? But um, to be honest, every single one came in handy and most of them were backups. The heaviest gloves I brought were these black diamond, um, just full skiing gloves that were kind of for when it got really, really severely cold. Mitts are a little warmer, but these are nice because if you need the dexterity, you can use them. Uh, pot goggles. <laughs> goggles are basically um, God's greatest gift to cycling. They are the most incredible tool you could ever use, especially when it would get windy or just your face needs to get warm. Like these are, these are sick. They come in incredible handy all the time. Um, a helmet. We had this great debate of the trip like, oh, should we bring a helmet? Hel riding a helmet in the snow sucks. It does. It sucks wearing a helmet when you're going like three miles an hour. But the moment we would hit pavement or the moment we were on ice, the helmet becomes a beautiful invention that is designed to protect your noggin and we're grateful we had it. Um, because there were some sketchy moments on the trip, even moments where we were going three miles an hour. And if you would even look at your brake, your whole bike would suddenly turn. It was a miracle. This paw helmet was rad, really light. Um, had a little killer mount for a light on there. Um, this is my water bottle setup. I only brought two water bottles. One was an insulated little mug from Yeti. One was a, a um, Hydro Pack insulated soft flask. So when I use it, it could get small and I could just collapse inside my little, my little bag right here. Um, pogies. These are the 45 North Pogies. They are absolutely the best thing on the bike. You literally just store random crap inside them. Sometimes you even find stuff in here. Rebecca really was the one advocating for the Pogie system and this got us really excited about what we could store and the lengths at what we could put stuff. These are little like outdoor research glove liners, super thin. Oftentimes your hands would be toasty warm and inside these pogies you would throw anything. This is my Descent Labs buff. I would keep that in there if I wasn't wearing it. Um, this is chapstick. Keep that in there. Um, what, what else? Oh, we got an extra hand warmer. Those were amazing. If you really wanted maximum warmth ratio, you would throw some hand warmers in there and then you basically just zip these things up and they worked great. Um, on the front of my bike, I also had a little Sunto watch that I would use for navigation. Um, this thing was rad. I could put it on a compass bearing or I could load the route in there. Um, this is the Baro 9. So 
I didn't use like a traditional Garmin style or, or Wahoo. I, I really relied upon this rad little tool to use. Um, front of the bike, um, opening up this little Revelate bag in the front here, I have basically all my electronics. This was always like headlamp, kind of extra batteries. I brought 40,000 milliamp hours of charging, mostly these little night core batteries that are carbon fiber. Um, in here, I'd have a little uh, plug, which was USB-C and USB, Icelandic. Um, what else? I had an extra headlamp in here, a little black diamond extra headlamp, um, zip tie. Uh, Jaybird headphones, those are nice in case you want to drone out some of the wind noise. Um, and then, yeah, just some other like little odds and ends, all kind of electronics, charging cables, stuff like that. In and around these little guys too. Oh my God, I was totally looking for this last night on the glacier. I thought that I had, I was like, where's my other Snickers bar? And I ate one and I couldn't find the other one and I got super disappointed. So that's gonna remain on the bike for the next time. Um, on the front of these little bags, you'd also just keep like chapstick. I had some sunscreen in here, um, skinnies. Um, I would keep little other things like that. Um, in this little front compartment, this little front roll here, I had a big Agnes zero degree sleeping bag as well as a pad. I'm not going to pull it out because it's an absolute nightmare to get off the bike. Um, but that thing was killer. It kept me incredibly warm. Um, it was something that made the hugest difference. We kind of debated over like zero degree, 15 degree, what do we bring? And just in case we were caught in that crazy winter storm and had to camp, that bag was amazing. It also kind of has a self-contained unit for the pad, so everything sat together and it was, it was epic. Worked incredibly well, um, at times even too warm. On the front of my bike, you can't see it, but I have a, um, a bar yak, uh, which is basically an extension bar. This allowed me to, to write in this area, basically set navigation, my phone, lights, all that jazz in there, and it, it worked incredibly well. Uh, moving back, this is a little specialized bag. This will hold like my, my little Xperia phone. I would shoot all my photos with this thing right here. Um, in here I had a credit card. I also had a little wipe for the goggles right there. Um, Revelate Ripio bag in the middle. This would have another buff in case my buff that I was wearing would get frozen. Um, I also kept in here goggles. It's a pair of pock goggles. Boom. My whole basically kit for the bike, all my tools. Um, the one thing I would say that was kind of invaluable here was was big tire levers because we're running big tires always two and then um, what was it the uh, the valve extender was an absolute lifesaver i'm really glad we brought that thing um, in here as well is a jet boil this is the stash it's a larger size jet boil and then the only other thing i had in there in the main compartment um, was oh crap <laughs> I was looking for these. These are more tire studs that I was hoping to find, but did not find. Anyway, um, I had a spare tire in here that I actually ended up using last night on the glacier. So we had we brought two fat bike tubes each, um, or yeah, t uh, tubes, and basically those were super helpful. On the left side of this bag, which is kind of your quick access, I have a Lazine multi-tool, super helpful. Um, obviously, something you can use with gloves, pretty critical. Another charger. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour charger that came in handy. Um, a little cable that has three different prongs on it for different charging. Um, a mask, and that's pretty much that. Uh, moving to the back of the bike here, um, this is basically an, an old man mountain rack. And uh, this thing is killer. It was designed for the bike. Um, I'm using these huge volet straps right here to basically hold on. Uh, these are always coming handy, bringing like a ton of these is helpful. Um, I mounted a, on the top of my rack, a cut up small thermarest pad. Oh, there's still some water on that. Um, basically because I knew that there might be a situation where you're kneeling down doing bike maintenance or you need a spot to sit and you don't want to get wet. Getting wet sucks. This actually came in incredible handy when we were kneeling down fixing the bike, putting tools on it, trying to throw stuff in the snow is a terrible idea. So that was rad. Um, this guy is kind of like my magic my, my magic kit, like all the things that I would need immediately upon going into the hut, I would just throw in here. And basically in, this is like some random bag. It's granite gear. It actually holds another bag. And I just, it was a nice size. It's a square shape, which was rad. So you could kind of shove things in there. Um, I'll just briefly go through this right here. Uh, tent poles, never needed the tent. Uh, lucked out and did not need to rely on that. But this was for a black diamond three person uh, bibbler tent. 
I carried the poles, Agnes carried the tent. Um, and this is like a little kind of extra clothing bag, had a pair of shorts in here, had some butt wipes in here, trash bags, extra turkey bags, thanks to Rebecca for our legs, save our feet. This was a shell I never wore. It was like an ultralight, like wind shell. Probably would have been really handy when it got really hot, but it just was something that was too, too challenging to consider putting on. So I never used that. In here, I have two extra pairs of gloves, base layer gloves, never used, just brought just in case, because if you lose those minimal gloves, you're kind of screwed. So I was freaked out about gloves. I had real anxiety. I bought extra pairs in Iceland. Extra pair of socks, another base layer, thin pair of socks, never needed them. My, I realized that the sock liners with the ski socks actually was an all-time setup. It kept my feet like stink-free and really good. This was just another layer of icebreakers. Never needed them. I have some tea bags in here. A single crampon <laughs> that was a interesting choice because we thought that in case we like did have to climb a mountain, we, we would just use one crampon using the bike as sort of our other point of contact. Never needed it, um, luckily, but, but we did put studs in the bottom of our boots. Um, in here, caffeine gum, um, another small hat. This is like a Rafa, like cycling hat, something that can go under the, under the actual um, helmet if we needed to. I realized that having something that can go under the helmet and then something you'd wear independently was really important. Um, so yeah, last thing that was crucial that I never needed to use more than once was these are a little face tape. People were asking us what we use on our face and our noses. Rebecca brought these. These were awesome, like helped us from kind of getting frostbite on our noses. And it's really interesting because you, you do a climb and it'd be super short, but then you descend and even that like, you know, 10 miles an hour of wind or whatever would on wet skin just creates a lot of, a lot of issues. More Volé straps. Um, this was a bag of food. Um, this was bars. I consume most of them. I have a couple bars of dark chocolate. Um, I also have a little granola mix I made that was kind of like a custom breakfast mix. Um, in addition to kind of some instant meals, uh, didn't even touch this, didn't need it. So I brought this pound of whatever this goulash is. This is a bag of sausages. Um, looking at this makes me want to vomit inside right now. Um, but I ate a lot of these and some baby bells. So um, those are done. Bars are done. Uh, electrolytes, tons of electrolytes. I can tell by the amount of these I consumed that I did not have enough electrolytes. Um, but I brought them mostly um, nitric oxide, which helps for like having good blood flow in cold weather, as well as some betalite and some other forms. Um, this is my little front fork bag. Inside this, I did, uh, this was attached to my bike, and you'll notice there's some KT tape there. I use that to make the front forks a little more sticky. Um, inside this was basically just another front fork bag that held my breakfast food, but that got used. And inside this are these real Termot meals that I bought in Iceland, sight unseen, never used before. Turns out they're absolutely splendid. And Looking at this brings back a lot of good memories because these are actually probably the only thing we had to look forward to at night besides trying to sleep. So this was full of about nine of them. I have at least four left, so we can eat that later. Um, those are awesome. The, both of those are mounted to the front fork. Obviously, the moment you can take that weight off the fork, your bike tends to handle a lot better. I usually like to have my bike rear loaded if I can. Um, again, in here, that's pretty much it, extra gloves. I also brought a bladder that, um, just in case we could use because there were some big stretches without water. Luckily, we only needed it once, and I think that day we didn't even really need it. There was enough running water and there was enough opportunities to boil. Uh, so moving on to just the, the back panniers. Um, these are both Revelate designs. Most of the bags in this bike are Revelate. Um, I had a whole bunch of extra straps. These were epic for basically tying around the leg and really using for anything. On the top of my bag, I would tie jackets. Sometimes I'd unzip this thing, tie it to there. And you just, you never know what's gonna break. And this and duct tape will pretty much save just about everything. Um, in here, I had one more layer from 66 North. This was usually something to kind of wear at night or a little hoodie thing. This is actually something I probably could have done without because the base layer that I was wearing, the 66, worked really well. Um, this was a harder shell, a hooded, hard shell and if I had to make a decision I could have potentially gone without that orange shell and just brought this they're both Gore-Tex Infinium this one's just a little more burly it was a 66 shell that worked awesome and um, I, I really only needed it the days when it was blowing wind and I wanted to protect my head from getting wet um, awesome shell though worked great and as you can see we have a lot of bright colors 
mainly because we wanted to be able to see each other. This is a pair of shell pants from 66, worked really well. Um, they're stretchy. I kind of went for the, the little bit lighter weight, stretchier pants because I wanted to be able to get on the bike and move. Um, this is a Lazine little pump and they're awesome. They work really well. I have tape attached to it, a little bit of rubber tape and a little bit of um, Gorilla tape. These things though will pull out your valve stem. So you gotta be really careful how you use it and how you disassemble it. Um, what else do I got here? Last little spot. This was kind of a catch all. The way we, we rig these things up, we wanted to be able to get in and out of them really quickly. This was a, a insulated hat by Cole Head where I wore this almost every day. Loved it to death. Came in handy when I wanted to protect my ears. Um, also something I could kind of like, you know, tie around the head and then just let like drift back a little bit. Um, plastic bags. These are the turkey bags. These would go around the feet and um, they don't actually make your feet more sweaty. They, they in fact keep so much warmth in. They're really incredible. Um, this is some lotion I stole from a hotel bathroom because my face was falling off. Uh, little dop kit. This is like a, a health kind of kit, toothbrush, all that stuff, as well as uh, just some Band-Aids, Advil, all those basic things worked really well. Um, extra hand warmers. The bag on the bottom of my bike, this one right here, this is like a down tube joy bag. The whole thing is full of hand warmers, about 20 of them in there. More Volé straps. This was an extra puffy jacket from 66 North I never took out. We knew that we would want to do double layers of puffies in case it got really cold. If you were standing at times, this is something you'd want to wear, um, but I never really truly needed it while riding. It, you'd always just generate too much heat. This is a little Rafa hat, little wind cover, something nice to wear on the hotter days, which I wore a lot the first day, but never really needed it again. And uh, multi-tool, this is a Gerber. This thing actually came in handy. Something big that we could, we decided to divide between the group to have small multi-tool and then a, a large one for grabbing stuff out. So this thing worked incredibly well. It has like a full size pair of pliers on there. Um, that's pretty much, oh, CO2 that, that never worked because, oh God, it would get too cold and then um, we'd basically not be able to use it or our hands or anything else. And plus I blew the O-ring out of this thing trying to use it. So um, not gonna need that. Tiny pack tail, black diamond gaiters, never needed the gaiters. The snow never got that deep. And, um, oh, last but not least, this is the flashlight that I used for the trip. It was a, uh, a night core kind of light that has a downward reflecting beam. Worked really awesome. I tied it to the top of the helmet or I could tie it to the forks. Um, lastly, what you see before you underneath all this, this crap, um, this is my Fazari Kings Peak. It's a fat bike designed by Fazari in Salt Lake City. This is the 2021 model. We got a chance to test it out basically right when it came out, literally straight from the factory, two days before the bike, the trip started. Um, it's all rigged up with SRAM components. Um, we used, we used hydraulic brakes. Um, we kind of wish we were using mechanical. That was, that was the point, but it, it didn't rig up correctly. Um, 10 to 52 tooth setup. So we had like around 520% climbing that was critical for what we were doing if we didn't have that gear ratio I, I don't even think the trip could happen that was a recommendation from Rebecca as well um, I just used stock pedals I was going to go clipless but I decided to just use flats mainly because I was worried about being able to unclip or getting snow stuck down in there we used the 45 North Dillinger 5 tires that were studdable we brought studs or we acquired studs from a, a pair of Schwalbe tires we found at a bike shop and pulled them out ourselves and then put them in ours. So our tires are about half studded. I wish they were fully studded, to be honest. Um, NV wheels, um, super light. Actually, the bike with all this crap off of it is, is incredibly light. Um, some other things you can't really see is a grip shifter, which made a huge difference, being able to just grip onto this thing. If I had to use my thumb the whole time, when it was freezing cold to shift, it would have been really hard. This thing felt like a motorbike. You could just basically you know, go in there and grip shift. That was amazing. Um, all the components work great. You know, uh, one thing I'll say about these bikes is that they produce a lot of torque. I tweaked my chain a little bit. I had to bend it back. That made a big difference. Also with the grip shifter, I had to adjust it just to, to add a little more tension in the line. But other than that bike was incredible. Um, worked good. My blinky light here came in handy too for the road sections. Um, huge thanks to everybody who supported the trip and the expedition, and this is it. You should clap. You should clap at the end. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding.